Hi everyone, this is Paul Schmutzler for Streaming Media Producer. Today I'm going to be continuing my series and looking at alternative NLEs from the perspective of a Premiere Pro editor. Today we're going to be looking at EditShare's Lightworks. Lightworks was one I was not familiar with, but it's actually been around since the 90s. And it was originally developed to help Steenbeck film editors be comfortable with the nonlinear digital editing process. And you're going to see one of the most standout features for this software is actually hardware. So first, let's take a look at the unique hardware that you can use with Lightworks. The Lightworks control panel is unique and designed specifically for Lightworks. So if you're familiar with something like a Shuttle Pro, or for really old school editors, the Steenbeck, which it was designed after, then you'll be pretty familiar with this interface. You have shuttle and jog controls, you have predefined buttons, and then there's also some user definable buttons where you can customize exactly what function they perform. And then finally you have large buttons for forward play, reverse play, stop, and record. There are a lot of things to like about having a dedicated hardware interface for editing. There's some things that take getting used to, but there's a lot of advantages to having that. If you're like me and you're used to using a trackpad or mouse plus your keyboard to edit, it takes a learning curve to get familiar with an interface like this and get used to using your hands in a different way. But I can tell you that the time I invested in using this for a few weeks really paid off in getting me a lot more speed. I'll be using the control interface throughout this demonstration, so I'm not going to talk about it anymore right now, but you'll see how I use it during the edit. The opening screen for Lightworks is a series of project choices. So these are projects that you have created in my case, I just have the one test project that I've worked on. The other thing to note about this is this is where your master program settings are going to be found. You cannot access these except for on this main screen. So if you want to change something that, that affects the entire interface, the entire program, this is where you have to come to do that. It's very easy to get to because when you launch a project, you'll see that there's a button up here that takes you right back to that main screen. Another thing interesting about Lightworks is there is, there's no save or save as function it always saves the most current version of what you're working on. So you don't ever have to worry about losing your progress. The main thing I want to show you here in the preferences is the two layout options. There's flexible and fixed. The flexible layout allows you to move windows around or panels around anywhere you'd like within the frame of Lightworks. And that's important to note. The fixed layout I'll show you here. As you can see, Lightworks has a predefined layout that fits your screen and you can't move things around. You have four main editing views, log for logging and ingest, edit for doing your timeline work, VFX for color and other uh, transitions, and then a finally audio to prepare your audio for export. Let's go back and change to the flexible view and I'll show you how that works real quick. To me, the biggest advantage of flexible view is being able to move the panels wherever I want to within the frame of Lightworks. To me, the biggest downside of flexible view is being able to move your panels wherever you want. Because the problem is it gets sloppy really quickly. There's not a great way to just clean these up. It does have some snapping, but it's very easy as you open different files and viewers for things to get cluttered on top of each other. One way to prevent that is to enable it to spill over to the second screen. Now Lightworks does recommend that you use two screens that are at the same resolution. I don't have that set up right now. So the problem I ran into was if I moved the window and stretched it across to my second screen, that allowed me to move panels over there or have one large program viewer or timeline viewer over here, which is great. Except because this resolution is actually shorter or smaller or lower res than this screen, I could not make the window on this screen go all the way to the top and the bottom. It limited it to only being a straight line across. So I ended up with this letterbox effect across here. So not a deal breaker, but it is something to keep in mind that using two screens with this software is going to be a little different than you're used to. Because with Premiere, you can grab a panel and move it anywhere you'd like to, maximize it, or have it share screen space with some other panel. As you can see in the bottom left hand corner, the Red Shark, which is kind of the company's mascot for the software, has come up with a hint. These are easily toggled on and off in the preferences or here with the screen dot. But it is helpful to have these when you're getting used to an application because whenever you do a certain command, it's intelligent to where it will come up and tell you a hint that may help you in what you're trying to do. On the left you have a toolbar, which most of these are fairly self-explanatory by their icon. You can create a sequence, 
you can go to your project content browser um, and then finally you also have your export option here which in Premiere Pro terminology would be export media or opening media encoder. Lightworks does not use a separate application for any functions it's all built into the single application. Another nice thing about the flexible view is these rooms. You'll notice I have a drop down here and I have two rooms set up. These are like workspaces in Premiere Pro or most other Adobe software for that matter. So you can have a preset arrangement of different panels and quickly switch between them or among them by just clicking that drop down button and going to whichever room you'd like to work in. So that's kind of a nice workaround if you're not having an easy to use two screen view you can flip back and forth and have one just being a full screen of your timeline. So for now, let's go back to the fixed view and we'll walk through the four screens. The first screen in Lightworks is log. It's very straightforward. Anybody who's logged footage before on an NLE will know what to do here. You're basically pulling in files from storage somewhere and putting them into bins. You can sort things, you can change the metadata, you can read the time code, you can preview all the files here. This is where you go to begin your edit to get your files in order. Next, you'd move to the edit screen, and editing is also fairly self-explanatory. There are some differences in functions. Um, for one, I had, a tr I had trouble learning the keyboard shortcuts very well because some of the keyboard shortcuts were kind of unusual, and I also found that just to find them, I actually had to go back to the main screen, go to the settings, and then go to the keyboard shortcuts. And in order to do... <laughs> In order to find anything, I had to search here. And if I didn't know what I was searching for, I had a huge list to try to go through to find what I was looking for. So that was fairly inefficient. But once I got the main keyboard shortcuts down that I really use a lot, I was okay from there on out. So as you can see, I do have a preview monitor for the clip that I have pulled up from my bin. And then I have a program monitor, which is showing my timeline sequence here. I'm going to start using the control surface now so you can watch and see how that works. To me, one of the most satisfying things about this control surface is a really simple thing. Just the ability to just scrub on a track like this and hear that audio at the varying speeds, it's just so nice. I know it's gimmicky and I know it's kind of meaningless because scrubbing is scrubbing, but I just like the old school feel of being able to hear that as if I'm scrubbing an actual tape. So you have a jog wheel here where you can carefully scrub frame by frame and then you have a play speed that you can adjust here with this larger one. And it scrubs up to several times, but then it'll go silent up, uh, once you get into the higher speeds. So to remind you, I did a basic edit in Premiere Pro. And then what I tried to do is I would take those clips that I used and the music, and I would try to replicate that in another NLE and see how easy or hard it was to do it and see if there was any ways that I could have made it easier by using a different piece of software. So I took all my clips and music into Lightworks here and I organized everything just like I had in a Premiere Pro. And then I pulled up my Premiere Pro sequence on the second monitor and just went in and replicated exactly what I had done there. And it was pretty easy. Um, it was a painful learning process, just again, getting used to those new keyboard shortcuts and getting used to this control surface and when to use it and when to stay on the keyboard or mouse. So it was a learning curve. But once I got pretty fluid with it, I got into a rhythm and things went pretty well. So I mark in and out points here by scrolling that marker. I can do in, and then I can move down, choose out, and then I can use a couple of buttons up here depending on what I want to do. In this case, I want to replace, which would be like overwrite in Premiere Pro. I can undo that, and then I can do a insert instead, which will put it between clips, which would be, I think, also insert in Premiere Pro. There's also undo and redo buttons on the console itself instead of having to go to the keyboard to do Command Z. If I'm using the fixed view, or I'm using, or maybe I don't have a room set up as full screen, there is another way to go into full screen mode, but it takes over everything on your screen. On the Mac, it would be function control F12, which puts everything in full screen, and then I can play back the sequence from there. The downside to that is, of course, I can't use any other parts of the interface while I'm doing that. So that's only for previewing here and there. Something else I struggled with was how to easily move the edges of clips. Like sometimes I would have an in and out point set and I would put that clip on my timeline, but it would be slightly off because all of my cuts are right on a beat of the music. And so I would try to scrub something a little bit to the left or right and it would move too much or it would move everything. And I was having a hard time figuring that out. But eventually I realized that in order to 
easily nudge clips or slide things, you would actually single click between clips, then that allows you to go into um, kind of a slip or slide mode, which moves both clips together. And then single clicking again will bring you back out of that into a normal mode where you would just adjust one clip by itself. So now let's go to the VFX panel. I'll show you how that works. Now there are multiple ways to get to the effects within Lightworks. You can do it in flexible mode a little bit differently than you can do in the fixed mode, which is good and bad. It's good because it gives you more options. It's bad because it can kind of make it confusing to users because they're not sure where things might be in any given interface. So there's not as much consistency there. For this demonstration, I'm just gonna show you how it works in the fixed mode. You can see that I actually have an FX track on top of the video. The first thing I was trying to do was apply color adjustments to an individual clip and then in Premiere Pro what I would have done is gone to that effect, copied it, and then selected other clips and then pasted it. I cannot do that in Lightworks. So the way I applied all of it was actually to a track above the entire thing, which is actually pretty innovative. I liked being able to just apply one effect or even multiple effects that can go over a whole bunch of different clips by setting it over top of them on the timeline. So first I can disable this and show you what it looked like when I did it individually. And I would have had to gone through every single clip and made that color adjustment and then put in each value individually here that I set. And that would have been ridiculously time consuming. But when I finally figured out that I could apply it over everything, it was actually a huge time saver over even the way I did it in Premiere Pro. So that was a huge boost to me. I didn't need to make any changes to the audio because it was just a music track. But if I wanted to, I could also apply effects to multiple audio tracks in a similar way to the way I did it here with the video. In addition to this color correction FX track that I have here, I also applied 3D LUTs to the clips individually to give it a more cinematic look. After I had added a transition at the front and the end and faded the audio, I was ready to move on to the last step. My audio track for this project is very simple. It's one music track with no natural sound at all. So all I had to do was remove the audio that I had from my video clips, apply my music, and then just check a few things and make sure I didn't have any blown out levels or anything. If I had wanted to, I could have come to the audio track to remove any sort of noise that I didn't need or to improve any vocals that I had on the audio track. So now that I've completed the editing process, I'm gonna go back to the flexible view and show you how to do a sequence export from there. To export a sequence, you'll go to your tools bar on the left and you'll choose the icon near the bottom that allows you to choose the settings that you want for your file. My source data is gonna be the same as my export, which is 1080p 24 frames. I don't have any stereo data, so I don't need to worry about that. We'll just leave that where it's set. And I do wanna keep the stereo audio from my music track. The sample rate and sample size will be the same. And I want the audio to be embedded, but it does give you the option to export that separately. So your video track would be silent and you'd have a WAV file that was actually separate from that. And then you can choose the region, which in Premiere Pro or Media Encoder would be like choosing sequence in and out or the entire sequence. Then you can select the destination, name the file, and you're ready to export. Export formats are somewhat limited in Lightworks, but it has the main ones that I typically use on a day-to-day -day basis. MP4, MOV files, and then several presets for social media channels like YouTube and Vimeo are very handy and the ones that I go to most of the time. Start brings up a background activity monitor which shows you the progress of your encode. And after it's completed, it will bring up a log showing you that it was successful and you can simply click the link here to open your file up in Finder. So that's a look at EditShare's Lightworks from the perspective of a Premiere Pro editor. If you'd like to use Lightworks, you can download it for free from EditShare's website and if you want to buy a console and use it with your software, you'll need to have a pro license. I hope you enjoy this look at Lightworks. Happy editing.